service of Holy Eucharist begins on page 355. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from Acts of the Apostles. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter and were astounded by the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they had heard him, them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. 
This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful people with the power of your word. Amen. Please be seated. I wonder how many of you have ever noticed or really looked at the plaque on the front door of All Saints Church on the dark wooden door between the bell tower when you first walk in and then the narthex. I wonder how many of you have really looked at it. <laughs> There's a couple of hands up. Well, if you have, you may have seen the words, the peace of God be with you in the shape of the cross. And if you've looked closely, you will see that the inlay work on the plaque shows some of the flora and fauna of the Great Swamp, our local national wildlife refuge. The plaque was made by Jack Fuller, who was a parishioner here at All Saints for many, many years. And the different colors of the wood in this plaque are all the natural colors of the different types of wood that he used. The theme of the swamp represents not only a local landmark, but also the importance to us as Christians of God's creation and our place in it. Today is Rogation Sunday. It's not a word we often hear. But Rogation Sunday is always the sixth Sunday of Easter. And the weekdays that follow it are also called Rogation Tide, the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday before Ascension Day. In the early Middle Ages in Europe, the custom arose at this time, the custom arose of, a, of the whole community led by clergy and acolytes processing throughout the villages and fields and farms to ask God's protection and blessing on newly planted crops and herds and gardens. And as the procession went from place to place, there would be prayers and the reading of the gospel and property boundaries would be marked with crosses. It was an all day affair. Now I don't know if it's just a coincidence or if it's actually a holdover from medieval practice, but here in the US, old stone or concrete property markers that were sunk into the ground at the corners of people's property, those property markers would have crosses chiseled into the top of them. Has anybody ever seen one of those? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't know if it's just a coincidence or, or if it really is a holdover, but it's something to note. In those rogation processions, there was also the theme of just and equitable dealing with neighbors. Because boundary disputes between farms and fields would be resolved. 
and the whole community would bear witness to what was being agreed upon by disputing partners. So if, if farmer A said, no, that sheep field is mine, and farmer B said, well, your, your cattle are encroaching on my wheat field, all of that got resolved. Order and equitable relationships would be restored between neighbors. The fabric of the community would be strengthened. All the themes of Rogation Tide continue to be important for us today in new ways, but perhaps even more importantly than ever. We only have to look at the headlines to know that we are in a climate crisis that affects us and each area of our country and the world and affects us differently, but affects us all nonetheless. And in some places, those effects have been very difficult to cope with. The natural world, God's creation, is under great stress. We also know from the news and perhaps from our own experience that our sense of neighborliness has been stretched very thin, sometimes almost to the breaking point. Many people carry a sense of suspicion and even hostility towards those outside of their families and groups that they choose to associate with, whether those groups are marked by place or political party or language or race or ethnicity or gender. We seem all too willing to ignore or turn away from our common humanity. But the Christian season of Easter and these rogation days don't allow us to do that, not if we are living by our faith. Easter is fundamentally about God's new creation through Christ's resurrection. That doesn't just mean the annual renewal of springtime, but nor does it simply mean being approved to go to heaven when we die. God's new creation reclaims the purpose for which God created us in the first place to be good partners and wise stewards of the beautiful and bountiful world God has made, but which we have so often defaced and damaged through our human frailty and foolishness, cruelty and greed. When we remember the love that God has for us and the sacrifice that Christ has made for us, and when we repent of our sins and the sins of humanity, and allow ourselves to be shaped and formed by Christ's life and love, then we are being made new. And when we are made anew, when we are born again, then God uses us to be agents of life and light, to be makers of peace, to be encouragers of human flourishing, and caretakers of the earth. We understand that the whole world and all its people belong to God and is therefore part of our scope of prayer and concern, effort and action. We are all intertwined and interrelated. But we also know that what we do in our own place, in our own communities and neighborhoods, is just important as what we do for the world. The partial and the whole go together. The choices we make about our local environment and the ways we value and treat our neighbors contribute to the fabric of well-being for our planet and for the whole human family. And that sign of the cross on the front door of the church, bidding us God's peace and superimposed over images of God's creation, that cross is a clear reminder of our role as stewards and partners with God for the well-being of the world. We start with our own place, but we don't stop there. For in God's heart and mind, there is no us and them. There is no place outside the bounds of God's goodness and grace. And so this Rogation Sunday, we pray and we ask, for that is the meaning of the word Rogation, to ask. We pray and we ask for God's blessing, 
not only upon our own gardens and grounds, not only upon our own patch of earth, or for the flourishing of those we know and hold dear, but we pray for the blessing of all people. We pray that we may see and know them as God sees and knows them. We pray for an abundance of our own produce and flowers and crops, and we also pray for an abundance of food for those who desperately need it. We pray for respect for the natural world and for our wise use of it. We pray for the good and right use of resources for the benefit of all, our brothers and sisters in this world God has made. Let us pray. O oh, merciful creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us always thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account we much, must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us stand and give our hearts to God in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people found in your service leaflet. Please add your own petitions during the silences. Rejoicing in the mighty acts of God who has delivered his people from sin and death through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, let us lift our voices and pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us give thanks to God for the multitude of blessings he showers upon us for our lives and for those whom we love, for the beauty of this home God has created for us and those who serve our wider community, Lounsbury Meadows Housing, for our families and our friendships, 
Let us give thanks to the God of life. Risen Lord, let us pray for the church that it may carry forward the redemptive works of God, for our clergy and our bishops, for the many lay people who serve the church and serve the world through the church, especially these members of our parish, Charlotte Heiser, Jerry Huskins, Heather Ingram, Donna and Anthony Iorio, Bob Jackson and Susan Levan, Marlena and Andy, Janice, Andrew, and Tyler. For the ministry of our staff and for the Episcopal Church as we prepare to elect a new presiding bishop in June. For those gathered here in worship and prayer. We give thanks today especially for the birthday of Wayne Celeste in whose honor the flowers have been given today. Risen Lord. Let us pray for the newly baptized and for those preparing for confirmation. Joy Alviston, Bailey Gillespie, Mia Saida, Val Sandberg, Caden Thursfield Ritchie, Ben Webb. That the joy of Easter may ever grow within them and that the spirit may guide them in lives of active faith. Risen Lord. Let us pray for the nations and the peoples of the world that the powers that oppress and destroy may decline, and that justice, peace, and prosperity be lifted up. Risen Lord, let us pray for those who are sick, those who suffer, those who struggle, especially Anne Bird, Stephanie Bosu, Jen Busquet, Carol C., Mike Cappiello, Mary Beth Finn, John Grabko, Penny, Joanne, John, Kathy, Steve Kowalik, Kathy Levan, Lynette, Marianne and Rob and their family, Robert Paul Mayers, Monty and his family, Ryan P, Deanna R, Dave Sika, Alice Wallace, Phyllis Wallace, Janet Weaver, for the people of Ukraine, for a just and secure peace in the Holy Land, for those who have died and those we name. That the hope born of Easter give them peace, acceptance, and renewal, and that through their struggles they may come into closer communion with the God who redeems and restores. Risen Lord. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that we who have been raised with him may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now returning to page 350. 60. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace.
Peace be with you. Please be seated. Welcome to our service this morning and welcome to those who are joining us on Zoom or will be watching this video later. I'm very glad to have you with us today. As our service progresses today, we are planning to go outside at the end of the service for the rogation procession. Uh, we will be getting a high sign from the ushers as to whether or not it is raining. So we will, we will find out, we'll be in suspense until after the post-communion prayer, and then I will tell you whether we are staying or going. If we are going, uh, we'll process out at the, on the last hymn. Please do bring your bulletin with you because what, the things that you need to say and do are in the bulletin. We'll go out the front door, around the side of the church, and into the memorial garden. If we are staying, we will just remain in our places and uh, proceed with that piece of the liturgy, and then we'll be dismissed from here and just go out. And I hope you will all come across the street to coffee hour following the service. Um, the note in the bulletin says it's for the earth. I hear that we have some gummy worms as part of our coffee hour this morning. So for those who like gummy worms, uh, we have them. Please, so please do come. We also have coffee and tea and more sort of grown-up uh, snacks as well. Um, today is the last day of the Boy Scout flower sale down at the Valley Parking Lot in a uh, Valley Mall parking lot in Gillette. Uh, please stop by. Also, uh, this week is Ascension Day. We will be celebrating Ascension Day Thursday evening at 7.30 p.m. with a service of Evensong. That is a beautiful um, uh, choral service. So we have hymns and anthems and canticles as well as prayers and scripture readings to celebrate that day. That is one of the seven principal feasts in the church year. Uh, also, after church today, you can buy tickets for the fish and chips dinner. Please see Earl Sandberg. Earl, maybe you can just wave your hand so people know who you are. Uh, come across the street and get, get uh, as many tickets as you would like uh, and share them with your friends and family. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful event, so please do uh, pay attention to that. Are there any other announcements for the parish this morning? Does anyone here have a birthday or an anniversary or is celebrating some other milestone, a baptismal anniversary or uh, an adoption day, anything like that? If you are celebrating something like that in the month of May, please come forward. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase, especially Suzanne and Robert, Mia, Kathy, Barb and Bob. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So this month is Suzanne and Roger's 35th anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, happy anniversary. You're welcome. Please do know that all baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion at the Lord's table. Please come forward when the ushers indicate. Uh, you may stand or kneel at the altar rail. Put your hand out like that. You'll be given bread in your hand. You may then consume the bread immediately and drink from the chalice 
or save your wafer and dip it in the wine. Of course, you can always receive just the bread or just the wine. Uh, and if you prefer not to receive today, cross your arms across your chest and you'll be given a blessing. But please do come and now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361. And as we give thanks today for God's creation, we also give thanks for all those who cared for our own memorial garden and other gardens and grounds so well yesterday. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, 
in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
Continuing on page 366, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now I've been given the high sign by the, uh, by the ushers. We are going to go outside. So please bring your bulletin and let us stand and sing hymn 291. And be sure to follow after as the uh, procession goes out. <laughs> 